Well, last time, uh, Jerry really let the cat out of the bag. He introduced the idea of assignment. Of assignment. And state. And as we started to see, the implications of introducing assignment and state into the language are absolutely frightening. I mean, first of all, the substitution model of evaluation breaks down. And we have to use this much more complicated environment model and this very mechanistic thing with diagrams even to say what statements in the programming language mean. And that's not a mere technical point. See, it's not that we had this particular substitution model and, well, it doesn't quite work, so we have to do something else. It's that, it's that nothing like the substitution model can work. Because suddenly, suddenly a variable is not just something that stands for a value. Right? A variable now has to somehow specify a place that holds a value, and the value that's in that place can change. Or, for instance, an expression like f of x might, might have a side effect in it. So if we say f of x and it has some value, and then later we say f of x again, we might get a different value depending on the order. So suddenly, we have to think not only about values, but about time. And then things like uh, pairs are no longer just their cars and their critters. A pair now is, is not quite its car and its critter. It's, it's rather its identity. So a pair is, has identity. It's an object. And two pairs that have the same car and critter, well, might be the same or different. Because suddenly we have to worry about sharing. So all of these things enter as soon as we introduce assignment. See, this is a really far cry from where we started with substitution. Right? It's, it's a technically harder, harder way of looking at things because we have to think and more mechanistically about our programming language. We can't just think about it as mathematics. It's, a, uh, it's philosophically harder, because suddenly there are all these funny issues about what does it mean that something changes or that two things are the same. And then also it's programming harder, because as Jerry showed last time, there are all these bugs having to do with, with bad sequencing and aliasing that just, just don't exist in a language where we don't worry about objects. Well. How do we get into this mess? Well, maybe the reason that, that building systems like this seems to introduce such uh, technical complications has nothing to do with computers. See, maybe the real reason that we pay such a price to write programs that mirror our view of reality is that we have the wrong view of reality. See, maybe, maybe time is just an illusion and nothing ever changes. See, for example, if I take this chalk, we say, gee, this is an object, and it has a state. Right? At each moment, it has a position and a velocity. And if we do something, that state can change. But if you studied any relativity, for instance, you know that you don't think of the path of that chalk as something that goes on instant by instant. It's more ins insightful to think of that whole chalk's existence as a path in space-time that's sort of all splayed out. Right, there aren't individual positions and velocities. There's just its, its sort of unchanging existence in space-time. Similarly, if we look at this electrical system, if we imagine this electrical system as implementing some sort of uh, signal processing system, the signal processing engineer who put that thing together doesn't think of it as, well, at each instant there's a voltage coming in, and that translates into something, and that affects the state over here, which changes the state over here. Nobody putting together a signal processing system thinks about it like that. Instead, you say there's this signal that sort of is splayed out over time. And if this is acting as a filter, this whole thing transforms 
this whole thing to some sort of some sort of other output. <coughs> that you don't think of it as what's happening instant by instant as the state of these things. And somehow you think of this box as, as sort of a whole thing, not as little pieces sending messages of state to each other at particular instants. Okay. Well, today we're going to look at another way to decompose systems that's more like the signal processing engineer's view of the world than it is like thinking about objects that communicate sending messages. Okay. That's, called, that's called stream processing. And we're going to start 